Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jack. I'm here to talk to you today about character encodings. Uh, this is still not automatic in 2015. There are still things that can go wrong. People have been encoding characters into bits and bytes for a long time, but it's still really not perfect. And this popped up lately this past week. Um, I recently signed up for ThoughtBot's Fantasy Football League, and I created a team. This is a very popular thing run by ESPN. But since I'm in Sweden, I decided to give the team some of these funny characters in the name. Some are these, some of these are Swedish characters, some are just other things. Just to be funny, because that's hilarious. So I did this, and it worked fine on the website, and everything seemed fine. I'm like, great, that's cool. It actually surprised me that it worked well on the website, because so often these things don't work. So this was a couple weeks ago, I signed this up, and it seemed to be fine. But then, here was the first sign of trouble that I saw in the iOS app. Every ca character is replaced by a pair of hash marks, and so it looks like swearing. And uh, later on, I saw this same representation appeared when I got a push notification reporting a player injury. One of my players was injured, we're not able to play in the game, and it said, okay, this, is, was, this was in the text that it looked just like this. The next thing that happened, though, was when someone proposed a trade. Uh, Tom wanted to do a trade with me, one of his players was one of mine, and Stockholm footballers became even weirder. So rather than hash marks, each funny character has now two different other funny characters. And each of these pairs usually starts with a capital A with a tilde over it. Uh, this same substitution also appears in all the other push notifications that I've got from, from ESPN for different kinds of alerts. They have like trade alerts and game score alerts and stuff. And this, that's what my team name looks like in all of those things on my iPhone. So uh, this uh, also appeared in, so this is the email, right? So I, I looked at the source of the email. In the source of the email, it looks like this. So each one of these uh, funny characters is dramatically expanded. So you can see that we start with an ST and then a chunk of stuff and then a CK. So everything in between there is a single O with two dots over it. It's spread out into actually 12 characters in the in the text of the email source. And as you can tell, it's representing four different hex bytes. And so the question is why, you know, why does this really happen? We have several representations of the same string. The, you know, the thing I actually want is the one on top where it's got these characters. I've seen one where they just, you know, whoever, someone, somebody just gave up and said, let's make hash marks out of this. And then I see this weird representation with the wrong weird characters and too many. And then this long, long interpretation of too many things. So let's, one of these is not that interesting. The hash mark one is not interesting. That's just something where some, somebody kind of gave up. We'll get back to it later, but it's not really useful to try and figure out exactly what those mean because they're indeterminate. Um, if we just examine these cases, I want to figure out what is happening here. So let's look at just one character from this. I look at this character that's officially called Latin small letter A with a ring above. In Swedish, this character is just called O. I'm going to call it O all the time. I just picked this because it was easy to spot in the string and there's only one of them, so it's an easy thing to, to start with. So how do we get from the former to the latter? The answer involves ASCII. It involves an extension to ASCII called Latin 1. It involves UTF-8. It involves backwards compatibility. And it, of course, it involves programmer error, as most things do. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go through sort of all, the, all these things a little bit. So ASCII. ASCII is a 7-bit representation, so you can only represent 128 different characters. It includes the 26 characters in the, in the primary alphabet that we have in English, both upper and lower case. Nothing with any accents. Uh, the first 32 characters are all non-printing characters. They're sort of control codes for, you know, this is all historic stuff. It's not used that much anymore all the time. Um, so, and this was fine for a lot of things in the 50s, 60s. But eventually people wanted to be able to do more stuff. And one popular extension of this is something called Latin 1. If you use all 8 bytes, you can fit an additional 128 characters into... Or if you use all 8 bits in a byte, you can, you can get additional 128 characters into a byte compared to 7 bits. Um, so Latin 1 defines the upper half of this space. There were, there were similar but competing standards for this in Mac and Windows and probably other things in Unix. And this was sort of a problem for decades because it added some characters, but didn't really add enough characters. You know, it adds enough for kind of most of the Central and Northern European languages, but that's about it. That's still pretty limited. So there were a lot of incompatibilities 
and frustrations around this not really working well for a long time. So Unicode to the rescue. Unicode is a more modern design. This, people start, first started thinking of this and talking about this in the late 80s. Let's represent a whole lot more characters than we could ever do with seven or eight bits. Um, and it's designed for interoperability and extendability. It has a few different representations. One of the most popular ones nowadays is called UTF-8. Um, in UTF-8, uh, every ASCII character, that is everything that is seven bits or less in the old ASCII system, is one byte in UTF-8. Everything else is between two and four bytes, depending. So for a lot of text in Western languages, UTF-8 is the same size as an ASCII document would be. Um, so, and there are other representations that are like, that are 16-bit and 32-bit representations, but those are less popular because they take up more space because every character takes 16 or 32 bits. So UTF-8 is widely used across the web. We all probably know about this. So back to our problem. The old character is at some point along the way when it's being worked with, it's transformed into a large A with a tilde and a yen symbol. And then later we also see that it appears as a string of 12 characters that, as you mentioned, these are hex symbols. So how do we get from one to the next? Well, the old character in UTF-8 is represented by two bytes. The hex values are C3 and A5. As it turns out, C3 and A5 in the Latin 1 character set are the capital A with a tilde and the N symbol, which we've already seen. So that, that explains part of what happened, how, we, how, the, how one of them is transformed into the other in some mysterious way. Um, but there's a bit more here. Um, but we can see that uh, somewhere along the way, ESPN is storing the O symbol as two bytes, and when it's being reinterpreted later, it's being reinterpreted in the wrong way, as if it were two Latin one bytes. Um, so it goes a bit deeper than this then. So the A with a tilde has, as it, if, if, if you represent that in UTF-8, it is also two bytes, it's C3A3. The N symbol, if you, if you represent that in UTF-8, it's also two bytes, C2A5. And so that's where all these bytes come from. So, it's not, so this O symbol is being mismanaged, mistreated into this other thing. Uh, now we can't, it's hard to know, we don't have the source code, the ESPN's website and stuff, we don't know what's going on. But, so we can only guess, but it seems like you, the team names are being saved as UTF-8, probably. Because they're being displayed correctly in certain situations, probably that's being done just fine. And in most of the app and the website, the UTF-8 data is being correctly passed along as a pair of bytes and correctly rendered by the browser. So we see the C3 and A5 coming back out as an old character in most situations. But when sending email and for some of the pushes, each of those bytes is incorrectly, incorrectly interpreted as if it were a Latin 1 character and that, and that, and that therefore needs to be expanded out to UTF-8. So, it says, okay, these two bytes, C3 and A5, well, that's A with a tilde and that's the N symbol. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand that out into two UTF-8 characters, each of which are two bytes. So I'm gonna expand that out into four hex characters. That's what ends up being pushed into the email and probably pushed into the push notifications. And then sometimes <coughs> the developers, they just punt and each byte that's, that's higher than seven bits, they just say, oh, screw it. The C3 and A5, I don't know what that is. I'm just going to make a hash for each of those. Just forget about it. And that's what, that's what we see in some parts of the app and in some of the push messages. Um, so that's how we get this proliferation of representations and views of these character strings. And this is obviously not what anybody wants to see. I mean, this is not what they meant to happen. <laughs> so how do, we, uh, how do we avoid this? There are a few simple sort of guidelines to follow to avoid this, and of course these specifics are going to depend on what technologies you're using. But in general, I would say, um, first, pay attention to character encodings. Think about this when you're saving stuff, especially when you're saving anything that, that a user might enter. Make sure that you know what inf how you're getting data from a web form or whatever it is, and what form that's taking and what you're actually saving. Like, examine what, what the actual bytes are you're pulling back, and make sure that what you're saving is what you think what you're saving. Um, know what character encoding your application is saving, both from user-rendered stuff and just in general. Like anything, any, any documents you're using any, that you're reading from disk, anything at all, it's good to be aware of this stuff and pay attention to how it's being used when you're using it. And any, anything that's pulling data out of the database or from your files or whatever should pay attention to the character code encodings and know how to respond to that and deal with it the proper way. Um, and again, the specific, I can't say, 
specifics about this for anything in particular. It's going to be different whether you're doing Ruby or Python or ASP or whatever, <laughs> whatever old thing they're probably using for ESPN's website. But um, it's important to sort of think about these things so you don't end up with this kind of sloppy representation for no good reason. That's all I had to say right now. Any questions or anything? Or just clapping? Just clap. Did you report a bug to these apps and websites? No, I didn't yet. I only sort of this morning went through and kind of summarized what all this stuff was and, and really sort of dug through it. Like I noticed the problem a few days ago, but I probably will report it because I mean, they're a huge, a huge company with a huge website. They ought to know about this, and they ought to do better. I think. Yeah. So. I guess part of it comes from the fact that probably most of their users are in the U.S. Right. But I don't think that's. Um, I don't think that's an excuse. No. Like I mean, the second language in the U.S. is Spanish, and Spanish they have accented characters. Yeah. So even if you're just using the, the Spanish characters, you'll have the same exact problem with those as you have with the Swedish characters. In fact, one of the things I had in here was in. E with an accent mark over it, which you definitely have in Spanish. So, and if you write A with a tilde above it, is it going to turn into something else? Is yeah, it, I'm sure it will. Turn into itself. No, it'll turn into. So this is the weird thing. These things are kind of recursive. So A with a tilde, if you if you take that and expand it out into UTF-8, that becomes A with a tilde followed by the N symbol or something. It's like there's like a weird. <laughs> Some of these things are kind of like, or, like, or maybe no, no, it's the N symbol that it contains within its own representation in UTF-8 contains once again the Latin one N symbol. You can just go down a deeper and deeper <coughs> rabbit hole. Cool. All right, thanks everybody.